praise the name of Jesus. Welcome to our core continuing order religious education. We greet you in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus. And we just want to encourage you to trust Jesus, trust Jesus, trust Jesus each day through your trials, tribulations, and trouble. Trust Jesus with your life. Lord God, lead God and direct me. Fill me with the knowledge of your will. Fill my children with the knowledge of your will. Put hedges of protection around us. And we praise God for whom all blessings flow. We begin a new series uh, this evening uh, in on, rather, waiting on God, waiting on God. That waiting is essentially a part of worship, and God makes us all wait. Uh, delay comes with direction, dependence, and deliverance, and there is something in the delay process that God is preparing us for, working out, and, and um, many times it's difficult for us to wait on God. We're waiting on God for direction. We're waiting on God for deliverance. We're waiting on God. And let me begin by going to the really well-known passage of Scripture, Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. And I want to pull out some things that you and I need to understand about waiting on God. That, first of all, everybody in the Bible had to wait on God. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, uh, everybody had to wait on God. It is, it is a mandatory course of faith to have to wait on God. Well, why, why do we have to wait on God? Because God is doing something, first of all, in us. He's establishing something in us. He's establishing something for us. He's establishing something in spite of us. He's establishing some things. And I, I, I want to first say what God begins to do as he uh, goes back to his person. And in this dispensation, this age, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God and God the Son, when he says, wait, he's, listen, he is designing a confidence in us of the person of God. So Isaiah chapter 40, well known. And here's what you need to know about the book of Isaiah. It's like a miniature Bible. The first 39 chapters, uh, first 39 chapters deal with judgment. And then the next 27 chapters, listen, deals with restoration and blessing. So all the way up to chapter 39, God is um, conveying to Israel his displeasure with their sin, their idolatry, a a amen, their forsaking of his covenant. But when you get to chapter 40, God begins to usher in his blessings. Now, let me stop Paul's in part, because what are his blessings? He says in chapter 40, in verse 1, comfort ye... Comfort ye my people, saith your God. So God says, speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished. Amen. That her iniquity is pardoned for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. So what God is saying is, okay, the chastening, the judgment, the punishment is over. Now I'm going to remember my covenant and bless you. Okay. And, and this is in a context, Old Testament Isaiah is in a context of them spending 70 years in Babylon for their sin. Judah spent 70 years in Babylon, of course, in 722 BC, the, the 10 tribes up north in Samaria, they were in captivity, amen, uh, up north, and now this is the sister Judah, two tribes in Judah, they are in captivity in Babylon, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and others, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all contemporaries, Habakkuk, 
And he's saying that your judgment is coming to an end. That is, when the 70 years are up, I'm going to comfort you and restore you, amen, according to my promises. But when we get in Isaiah chapter 40, and, 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 and you need to see this, he says, not only comfort ye my people in verse 1, but he goes on to say, amen, and 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 this is uh this is uh uh in verse in verse twenty eight, hast thou not known? Question, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, feigneth not? Now let me stop, pause, and part. In order for God to convey your confidence in Him. God wants you to know God does not faint. And the, the word feigning denotes he gets tired, he gets weary, and he gets fed up. God does not faint, hallelujah, nor is he weary. And the young men shall utterly fall, amen, I want you to hear this, amen, that he's saying that uh, he might increase strength. The utterly men fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Now, the first thing that we see here is that God renews our confidence. Our confidence is our trust in Jesus. Through all of your conflict, through all of the troubles that you and I experience, God is saying he does not faint. He does not become weary. He does not put us away. Thank God for that. I should have been put away a long time ago. But they that wait with confidence upon the Lord. So Lord, my confidence is in you to heal me. My confidence is in you to help me. My confidence is is in you to help my children, grandchildren. My confidence is in you uh, 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 to help my finances, to help my fractures, to heal me. My confidence is in you. Why is that such a major point? Because without faith, Hebrews eleven six, it is impossible to please God. So the first thing about this waiting period is that we have confidence that God is all powerful. He deals with the person of God. Have you not known, have you not heard that power belongs to God? The power of persuasion, the power of peace, the power, amen, to set us free, the power to untie the knots that we have in our emotions. So there is a confidence factor. God wants us to have confidence, and this is the confidence that we have in him, 1 John 5, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us, and if he hears us, we know we have the petitions we ask of him. Confidence. Where is your confidence as you struggle? Where is your confidence? Are you trying to work things out? Are you, are you hoping things get worked out? No, your confidence is in a person the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Have you not heard, have you not known that power belongs to God and also to him belongs with mercy? Now, mercy is pity. God pities us. He remembers that our frames are but dust. I'm nothing but dust in his sight. I'm fragmented. I got historical issues. I'm messed up. I fall short every day of his glory. Hey, listen, I don't always follow all of his precepts. I pout, I complain, I murmur, I, I do all the things you do. So don't look at me funny. And, and, and we have to have that confidence that in spite of me, God is going to work out my issues. God is going to work out my prayers. God is going to work out my problems. So the first thing that we see here in... Isaiah 40 is we're waiting with confidence. No, um, what I need, what I've been praying about, what I'm looking for has not arrived yet, but I'm waiting in childlike confidence. Now, confidence and trust are cousins, but trusting a person, but confidence in the person. 
I got confidence in Jesus that he said he would never leave me nor forsake me, that he's going to work out those things that bother me. So we wait in confidence. Then secondly, we wait through our conflict. That is, that that, con that waiting through conflict produces within me a perseverance of faith. James says in James 1, 2, count it all joy when, not if, it wins, only a matter of time that these tests come, when you fall into divers temptations, trials, that the trying or fire testing of your faith will work out patience, which is perseverance. What is perseverance? The ability to run a long race, not a sprint. You're not believing God momentarily. You're not believing God for a day. You're not believing God for a week. You believe in God forever. That he gives us the perseverance of faith as we are being fire tested. They that wait on the Lord, we wait with confidence. We wait through conflict. Every conflict in your life and my life, God is going to intervene because a shepherd does not want his sheep troubled. The Lord is, hallelujah, my shepherd, I shall not lack, I shall not want. If, I, if Jesus is my shepherd, I don't want for anything. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And let me stop Paul's part because sheep will not lie down when they're troubled. They will not rest when they're fearful. They won't even eat when they are worried about predators around them. So it's up to the shepherd to enhance the environment so they feel free to rest. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, new pastures of nutrition, he leadeth me beside still waters because running waters scare sheep. They have no defense mechanism. Okay? And, and so one of the things we need to understand is that God wants to end the conflict that's in us. He wants us to wait with confidence. And I know sometimes my confidence are like ebbs and flows, and, and I got to ask God to help me have the confidence in Jesus that I need just to make it through this day. Give me confidence in this person. Give me, amen, conflict through these problems. Because problems are part of life. Jesus said, in this life, you're going to have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So God wants to end the conflict, and some of our conflict is internal. It's not always external. Conflict is not always from the outside coming in. Sometimes it's from the inside to the inside. We got historic issues. We got conflict. We, we are conflictual within our own sight. I can cause my own conflict with worry, fret. I can cause my own conflict with anger, I can cause my own conflict with control mechanisms. I can cause my own conflict, listen, by not totally trusting Jesus. So God wants us to wait in confidence. Have you not heard? Have you not known that power belongs to God and also belongs mercy? And then he wants us to wait through the conflict. The Lord knows what you're going through. The Lord knows what you've been through. The Lord knows where you are, why your mind and heart is tied up in knots, why you worry, why I worry, why we fret, why we fear, why, why we're fractured. Lord have mercy. Uh, some of the things were learned. Some of the things came upon us. And Satan is behind all of it because Satan does not want you to rest. We rest in confidence. We rest through conflict. And then we wait through all conditions. In everything, 1 Thessalonians 5, give thanks. 
For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And we know that all things are being worked. And it says working, participle I-N-G. All things are working together for the good of them that love the Lord and call according to his purpose. The participle working denotes God has a plan. God has a master plan for your life that he's working through. He's working into. He's working through. He's working through this plan that all conditions, through all conditions, through my confidence, through my conflict, through all of my conditions, hallelujah, my Lord causes me to wait. Wait patiently. Wait with perseverance. Wait with his power. That, that, that he says, but they that wait, hallelujah, upon the Lord. And it's not easy always waiting on the Lord. We can become anxious. We become bothered. We, be, we become worried. We become unglued. We believe what we see more than what we believe. God says, be still and know that I'm God. We wait with confidence. We wait through conflict. We wait in all conditions, in all conditions. Whatever comes, God has it. Whatever overwhelms me, God has it. Whatever I wake up to, God has it. When you can't talk to the people, your children, grandchildren, about Jesus, talk to Jesus about the person. Lord, I'm placing my children in your hands. They are wayward. They are worldly. They are making bad decisions, but I'm placing them into your hands in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm placing this troubled marriage into your hands. I'm, I'm placing my finances into your hands. I'm placing my health and strength into your hands. You are the super healer. So God, I need you to meet me where you are. Give me, and here's what God does, through the conditions, through the conflict, through, through, through our confidence, God begins to cease the storms. He brings peace. And that's what we're going to pick up next Wednesday on the peace of God that passes all understanding. You know what God needs you and I to do? Be honest with him. Lord, I need to wait on you. It's part of worship. I need to wait on you with confidence that you're coming. I need to wait on you, oh God, through all of, amen, all of the things that causes me conflict. I need to wait on you through all conditions. I don't care how bad it looks, I need to wait on you. And I need to wait on you by faith that you're going to cease these storms that I'm living through. I dare to trust Jesus with your whole heart. I dare you to remember those four points next time you pray. I need to trust you with confidence. The Lord's got it. I need to trust you through all my conflict. He's going to straighten it out. I need to trust you. I need to trust you, Lord, through all conditions. Today it might be the roof, tomorrow might be the car, the next day it might be my sickness, my, my, my need for healing, and then I need to trust you, Lord Jesus, that you're going to cease all of my storms in the name of Jesus, who can say to the storm, peace be still. But they that wait upon the Lord, he shall Renew their strength. God bless you. Have a great Wednesday evening. We love you. Pray for Pastor. We're praying for you. We're praying for you and your family. That you would walk by faith, not by sight. That you would be still and know that he's God.
that you will remember my four C's. Confidence, conflict, conditions, and the ceasing of my storms. God bless you. Have a great day. We love you.